Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, you will learn what is a form array in Angular forms and how we can create and use a form array. In this lecture, we are going to use a form array in a reactive form. So, what is a form array? The form array is a way to manage the collection of form controls in Angular. And the control can be a form group, form control, or another form array. Now, we have learned that we can group some form controls together using a form group. So, a form group is also a collection of form controls. And a form array is also a collection of form controls. So, in Angular, we can group form controls in two ways, using form group and using form array. So, what is the difference between them? The difference between a form group and a form array is the way they implement it. In a form group, when we group some form controls together, the controls become a property of the form group. And each control is represented as a key value pair. But in form array, the control does not become a property of the form array. Instead, it becomes an element of that form array. Okay, so this form group is an object, but this form array is an array. Now let's see how we can create and use a form array in a reactive form. So here we have this registration form with these form controls. Now in this registration form, I also want to add a form control for skills. For that, let's go to VS Code and let's first go to our app component class. And here, let's go ahead and let's add a new property. And let's call this property skills. And this skills property is going to be of type form array. So to create a form array, we use form array class. And to the constructor of this form array, we need to pass an array. For that, we can use square brackets like this. Okay, so when we create a form group, to that form group, we pass an object. But when we create a form array, to that form array, we pass an array. Now, in case of a form group, inside this object, we specify the form controls as a key value pair. So this is the key and this is the value which we are storing in that key. But in case of form array, we need to specify elements because form array is an array. So here, let's go ahead and let's create three controls. And to create a control, we use new keyword followed by form control class. And to the constructor of this form control, for now, let's pass null. And in this way, let's create two more form controls inside this form array. So I will copy this and let's go ahead and let's paste it two more times. So this form array has three form control elements. Now, when we create a form group, the controls which we want to have in that form group in the HTML file, we wrap those controls in a container element. So for example, for this form group, we wanted to have this first name, last name and email controls. So what we did is we wrapped this first name, last name and email control inside a container div. Right. So for the form array also, we need to do the same thing. We need to create a container element. For that, I'm going to use a div here. And inside that div, we can write the HTML to display the form array controls. Here, let me go ahead and let me specify an input element of type text. And let's also specify a placeholder here. Okay, so here we are creating a container element. Now, on this container element, on this div, we need to use form array name directive. And to this form array name directive, we need to assign a form array. And we have created that form array here. So this skills is a form array. So let's go ahead and let's assign this skills property to this form array name directive. Now, what we also want is we want to loop over this form array and we want to display all these three form controls in the web page. For that, let me wrap this input element inside ng container. Let's cut it from here and let's paste it inside this ng container. Now on this ng container, let's go ahead and let's use ng for directive. And inside this ng for directive, let's create a variable. Let's call it skill of and here 
we want to loop over this form array. So we need to get access to this form array. For that, on this reactive form property, let's go ahead and let's call get method. And to this get method, let's pass the name of the property. And the name of the property here is skills. So let's copy this property name and let's pass it here. Now, this expression here is going to return this form array object and this form array object has a controls property so here you can see it has this controls property and it is of type abstract control array so we want to access this array and then we want to loop over that array and it is this array which is containing these three form controls okay so to access this array what we are going to do is we are going to make use of this controls property name so here I'm going to use square brackets like this and inside this let's specify the property name which is controls okay so this complete expression here is going to return an array so it is going to return an array of type abstract control and this array has these three controls so in our view we are looping over that array and for each element, we are displaying this input element. So if I go to the web page, you will notice that here we have three controls. If I go ahead and add one more control in this array, now you will notice that it is displaying four controls. So you can see it is displaying four controls. So in this way, we can create a form array and then we can loop over that form array and display it in the web page. Now, let me go back to the web page and here let's open this developer console and let's go to this elements tab. And here let's expand this form and let's scroll down to this skills div. So here we have this skills div. If I expand this div, you will notice that it is displaying four input elements. Now, on none of these input elements, we are seeing the state. That means on none of these input elements, the ng dirty, ng touched, ng valid, these CSS classes have been added. That's because currently this input element is not binded to the Angular form. It will be binded to the Angular form only when we use this form control name directive. So let's go ahead and here let's use this form control name. And to this we need to assign a value. And that value should be generated dynamically for each input element that will be added in the web page inside this form array. So here I'm simply going to use the value of the form control index as the name for the form control. So after this expression, let's try to access this index variable and let's provide an alias for it and let's call it i. And let's assign the value of this variable i to this form control name okay now if i save the changes and if i go to the web page and let's expand this div let's expand the form and let's go to skills div so if i expand this skills div now you will notice that it is still not adding the state that's because we need to wrap this i within string interpolation because here we want to use the value of this variable i and we don't want to use this I as a text right now let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's expand this div let's expand this form let's go to skills div and now you will notice that these states this ng touched ng pristine ng valid has been added on each of these input elements now if I go ahead and touch this first control you will notice that from that control ng untouched has been removed and ng touched has been added in the same way, if I go ahead and add some value here, you will notice that ng pristine has been removed and ng dirty has been added. Let's also go ahead and add some validation on each of these form controls. So let's say we want to make each of these form controls required. For that, as the second argument to this form control constructor, let's pass validators dot required. And let's do the same thing for other form controls as well okay 
let's save the changes and let's go to the web page and now these form controls should be required fields so you can see it is already displaying this red border for each of these controls and if we expand this div this form and if we go to this skills div here we have all these input elements and currently ng invalid class has been added on each of these input elements but if i go ahead and if i add some valid value in these fields you will notice that ng invalid has been removed from this first input element and ng valid has been added okay so this is how you can create a form array in a reactive form now here what i want is initially i only want to display one control here and i also want to display a button element and when the user clicks on that button element then a new form control should be added dynamically okay so let's go to vs code and from here i will remove these three form controls and i will keep only one form control there now in the html i am going to add a button element here and here let's provide a text let's call it add skills and on this button element let's go ahead and let's bind click event and when this click event happens we want to execute this method let's call it add skills and let's go ahead and let's create this method in the typescript class so i will copy this method name and here let's go ahead and let's create this method so when this this add skills button will be clicked we want to add a new form control after this form control so basically to this form array we want to add a new form control so for that first let's access this form array so here let's say this dot reactive form so this reactive form is of type form group on this let's use this get method and to this let's pass the name of the property so here the name of the property is skills this skills is storing this form array so let's pass that property name here and it is going to return us this form array and to that form array we want to add a new form control so to add a new element to an array we can use push method and to this push method we need to pass the value which we want to add to that array here we want to add a new form control and let's pass null as the first argument now here we have this error that's because this get method can return a value of any type it can return a form group it can return a form array it can return a form control etc so here we explicitly need to typecast the value which this get method will return into a form array for that let's use these angle brackets here and inside this let's specify the type as form array and then let's go ahead and let's wrap this expression within parenthesis okay so this complete expression is going to be of type form array and on that array we can now use push method with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now when i click on this add skills you will notice that a new control has been added here if i click again again a new control has been added here okay so in this way we are adding a form control dynamically to this form now currently on these dynamically generated form controls we don't have any validation we have only added validation on this first form control so if i click inside it and if i click outside you will notice that its border is changing to red but that is not happening for these form controls as you can see so we also want to add validation on the dynamically generated form controls for that here to this form control constructor which we are creating dynamically let's add a second argument so again here let's use validators dot required and now if we save the changes and if we go to the web page now these dynamically generated form controls are also required fields so if i click inside this and if i click outside you will notice that its border has changed to red and this is the advantage of using a form array using a form array we can generate form controls dynamically so i hope with this lecture the concept of form array is clear to you if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day